Hey, Kate, what did you eat last night? I had what is affectionately known in my family as chicken thing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that just sounds creepy and weird. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I never heard it like that until right this second when I said it, and I I agree. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but it's not chicken thing. It's chicken thing. So I don't think I said it right. (laughs) Oh, that's better. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, it's basically a chicken cacciatore type dish that is one of my mom's favorite things and I grew up eating both my parents made it I don't put mushrooms in it because I don't like them Um, so onion green pepper garlic tomato Italian seasoning chicken basically Um, and I have finally heated you know my mother knows everything so I finally heeded her advice to cook the chicken um, on the bone and then deal with taking it off the bone afterwards because it makes it... That's big. So I know, I know, because you have to brown it and then it's a little bit cumbersome. But the difference in the flavor and texture is really, really noticeable. So... God, I bet. I, I go that route now and it was delicious. And uh, I had it with some mashed potatoes and green beans. Nice. Isn't cooking things like that? Isn't obviously where the bone of the animal where so much flavor comes from also? Yes, exactly. That's right. So that flavor comes into the dish. It seeps in totally. And the meat just stays a lot more tender. Oh, I can hear it dripping off the bone as you describe it to me. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good. It's so good. How about you? What did you eat? Well, you know my tendency to make dips. (laughs) No, I didn't know that about you, Rick. Do you like dip? (laughs) Well, Kate, I, I thought this podcast would bring us closer. Uh, I do like dips. Okay. That's why I like so many of my friends. But, um, <laughs> um, just kidding. Um, so I made... <laughs> Kate's, I think Kate's rolling her eyes at that one. <laughs> I made a pea and wasabi dip. Ooh. This is... I know. This is a recipe I found. And you know what I love about it? It's just so easy. Because you basically put everything in a food processor, <laughs> blend it up, love and it. there you go. So there's basically olive oil, a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of the rind from the lime, and then you have salt, and you have peas, obviously, and then you make you get wasabi powder and just make a little paste out of it. Mm-hmm. And then you put that in, once you mix that up, you put that in there, blend it all up, and you have this really tasty dish of peas and wasabi. And you can just you can play with the wasabi about how much you put in. Like I like a lot of kick. It was really great. That sounds delicious. I've done a variation of that with pea and mint because you know peas and mint are friends. Mm. But pea and wasabi mm-hmm. sounds amazing. So tasty, a lot of flavor, and it takes care of my spice. And seems pretty healthy to me, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and peas are sweet, so you've got spicy, you've got sweet. Yeah, it's terrific. And I sat there and ate the whole thing. That might be where the healthy part, uh, not so much. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever, Kate. Hello, and welcome to another episode of You Won't Believe What I Ate Last Night. I am Kate DeVore. And I am Rick Fiore. And this is our ongoing conversation about food, health, weight management, and our endeavor to be and stay healthy in a really tasty world. With love, kindness, and compassion towards ourselves and others. We are so pleased to welcome to the podcast today, May Friedel. May is the founder of Passions for Spices, which introduces American Western cultures to India's culinary history and the health benefits of both the basic and exotic spices of India. She is also the author of the new book, Indian Cuisine, Diabetes Cookbook, Savory Spices and Bold Flavors from South Asia. She comes from a family of spice merchants where fresh foods are prepared in seasonally appropriate, wholesome and gourmet manner. Oh, and on the side, she also has like a master's in mathematics and computer science, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, But today, (laughs) she is here today to talk to us about Indian spices and cuisine and how that relates to our health. Welcome. Yeah, we're so happy to have you here, May. Welcome. uh, Thank you, Kate, for uh, Kate and Rick uh, for having me. I'm very excited for this interview. Yay. So our first question is, what did you eat last night? Oh, it was a humid and uh, muggy day. I figured out something for my husband and me, what to cook. So a really fabulous recipe from the book we thought we'll try. It -hmm. was a malabar, avocado and cucumber soup with uh, roasted fennel. That was the starter. And then we had a uh, murg malai kebab, which is a light uh, grilled kebab, which was was raining. So we couldn't grill outside. So Uh. we grilled that. 
Uh, it's chicken tenders marinated in saffron and light flavors. Uh, mm. delicate flavors with ginger and garlic and things like that and it's grilled in a kebab um, sticks and then we also thought let's make a, a roti it was like a wow a cast iron griddle tepla it's called tepla which is like a griddle bread with zucchini i bought it from the farmer's market so it was a fabulous meal me and my husband devoured it and it was so uh, delicious with a nice chill glass of beer uh, oh fun i am coming to your house for dinner right. from now on that <laughs> yeah. sounds perfect <laughs> we'll be there sounds tonight amazing. may <laughs> <laughs> sounds amazing so you come from a family of spice merchants can you tell us a little bit about that history and how it informs your current work Yes, I am so, as I was researching on the book and the culinary history, and I knew we had, we have, we have, uh, we were from a spice merchant's family, but really I dug, dig into, uh, dug into the, uh, the history of our family there. We came from Persia, um, around when St. Thomas came to India during that time when they mm. came to the trade for spices and gold and stuff like that. Um, so my family came from that area and settled down in a place called Quailon, which is like a trading center. And they ran to this area of uh, southern tip of Kerala and they established the, established the spice estates. Uh, uh, and they ran, I believe, because of the Portuguese uh, uh, and settled down this fabulous town. And the whole area is uh, everything they grow was sustainable, spices, coconut plantations, mm. paddies and things like that. So I was, I'm so thankful I am part of that culture and uh, history and i wanted to showcase that to the world and the quality of spices the scent of spices how it helps you know families that's wonderful is there a simple answer to the question because I, I know this is a very big question but of how spices affect our health i know that you have a real focus around diabetes so feel free to respond around that but also i know that there's other things beyond diabetes that you probably have information on about how spices affect our health right see my family was into the science of health called ayurveda ayur means life uh, veda means science so mm. we integrating this into our lifestyle for generations my grandfather was a centenarian so we incorporate mm all the food and the spices and the flavors everything good for you seasonal for rainy season we have certain food certain vegetables so they say okay to rejuvenate we have to in during the winter we need to have these kind of food so i am so used to hearing all that in my head um, so i wanted to showcase that spices for example turmeric is an anti-inflammatory it has mm -hmm. a called curcumin which is actually very very helpful for a lot of ailments uh, and uh, for uh, cumin and cinnamon and nutmeg and all these fabulous spices not only adds flavor to the palate but also enhances your immune system and it has phytonutrients which helps uh, prevent free radicals all those and and I'm not a nutritionist or a doctor but mm. a lot of research I can point to um, I've been working with hospitals also to to actually get the, all those things solidified and work with the communities to help you know prevent these chronic illnesses. That's exciting. Do we know if there's a dosage necessary for those to be relevant? That uh, specifically because uh, it's not appropriate. But if you look at uh, Dr. Edgar Wall, Healing Spices, there is a book, and he mm. says about a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon every day uh, and and uh, turmeric actually you don't you cannot use a lot because it can hurt your stomach it's quite powerful so ah. I, I wouldn't use a large amount um, uh, but but I think a teaspoon will be fine I think um, yeah we, we just just a balanced amount of spices is good every day if you use it in different kinds of food uh, for example, turmeric and black pepper I believe if you use together it absorbs in your body better and ah. Oh, well, that's of, interesting. Yeah, and you need some kind of uh, fat as well to to absorb. Um, right. That uh, you need that as well uh, to absorb in your body. You wrote the book around the idea of Indian cuisine and, and a diabetes cookbook. Why the pull towards diabetes? 
Yeah, I was uh, invited to write uh, uh, some other uh, book actually uh, regarding regional Indian cuisine and I happened to meet the ADA folks and they said they were looking for a spice expert uh, who's uh, familiar with the with the healing spices and and easy and fast recipes which Americans can use. So I have been experimenting and uh, testing recipes here in my test kitchen, especially with my passion for spices, uh, test uh, chefs. So we have been really uh, geared towards that. So it was really fabulous, good timing it was. So I um, so uh, really uh, was very helpful for me to learn the ADA guidelines on top of the um, Indian um, uh, techniques and practices. And ADA mm. is the American Diabetes Association, correct? Yes, ADA is, yes. And they had given me strict guidelines as to how much uh, um, quantities of each and every ingredient to use. That was, I was <gasps> not sure about that. So oh. That's why this book is so powerful. Wow. So, Test each and every recipe, not only for flavor. I am a gourmet cook. I want flavor. There's no way I'm going to eat diet food. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want that. And uh, nobody in my family will eat either. So No, you can't no. have bland Indian food. I mean, it's an oxymoron, right? It just doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know, but, but the thing is, you know, when you are sick and when you, have no, uh, when you are on a diet, there is very little information as, as to how to cook properly, especially with people with cancer or diabetes. It's, it's a, really a difficult problem. And and I have classes, actually doctors are joining my workshops and classes. They don't know how to cook and they want to cook fast and flavorful for their families, Indian doctors especially. Mm. So, so they it, it is a difficult thing. So we have tested using the gadgets, making it practical. For example, we do pressure cooking, we mm. do grilling, we marinate things ahead um, so that the flavor gets into the meat and fish. If there's no flavor, there is no use. You know, meat, if you, it's, I, I won't eat uh, anything without good flavor, but the techniques, how you grill it, how you sear it, how you roast it, how you brace it, these are the things. And your book is filled with really wonderful techniques and ideas yeah, yeah. on how to prepare things. It's really lovely. Yeah. I love Indian food and I love to cook Indian food. And I've just been going through the cookbook with Rick and I'm like, oh, look at this one. Turn to page 80. <laughs> and May, I one. love Indian food, but I don't cook Indian food. <laughs> so this, I love the first section the, the, yeah, about the basics. That was really good. Sorry, we want you to start cooking, Rick. You will not be disappointed. I made my first curry only six months ago because Kate, as a gift, had sent me this entire box of Indian spices. <laughs> hurry in a hurry and order my spices, which is easy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. It's one-stop shopping. Your yeah, topic is so... is amazing yeah. because even, even outside of diabetes, it looks like just really good, like everything you ever see on an Indian menu... Right, plus right. a whole bunch more stuff um, is in the book and the recipes seem really simple and user friendly and it's laid out really well and it's just a terrific Indian cookbook regardless of the health benefits. Agreed. Mm -hmm. One of the things uh, that's interesting in my community, May, is you know when you get to be of a certain age, I'm not going to mention that number, May, but it has a five in it and it has a zero <laughs> in it. A lot of your friends, all of us, we start to get into that cusp where we become pre-diabetic for some reason. I have so many friends that are really like, oh, I've got to start watching this, got to start watching that because I'm right. pre-diabetic. So that's what's so interesting and timely about this book in, in my life. And so the idea of applying that d is really exciting to me. Mm -hmm. What are yes. the specific spices or foods that are specifically helpful for diabetes? I think it is turmeric, uh, black pepper, uh, cinnamon, cumin, and fenugreek, I've added something called fenugreek, uh, which is actually a bitter spice. But when you put it in oil, it kind of have a garlicky flavor. The uh, leaf version or the ground no, seed? Seed. Because mm. I have both. I have the leaf and the seed, and I never know which one is supposed to be better. Yeah. So it's the seed. In India, I think is, you know, a lot of people just soak this in, in they make tea. Like I have, I have a fenugreek tea. It really helps with the blood sugar. So um, natural method, my touch wood, my mother and all, they really rarely use medicines. So they really try to do home home remedies first and they try to control all their uh, um, illnesses, you know. So even, even uh, thing is, I, I uh, want to mention, uh, I was in corporate world. I was head of knowledge management. I quit my 
fabulous job and for my child who had all kinds of illnesses. Uh, ah. I was five o'clock, I'll be going, coming back at midnight and I had no time to cook. My child was in the hospital with pneumonia and, and every time these antibiotics. So that is the reason why I quit my job and I started making everything from scratch the way I learned as a child. And my immune system is uh, fabulous because the, my parents gave me good food. So I wanted to give that to my child. So that's mm. what I wanted to share with others as well. But very simple. Everything wholesome. Everything um, uh, natural. And mm -hmm. his and asthma is gone. His allergies are gone. His immune system is so much better. So mm. I think the doctors are amazed. Um, so very simple. And when he gets sick, I just gargle with turmeric and little sea salt. Um, so all the phlegm comes out. Give him a ginger tea when, when, when there is a... Uh, in the cold season, just boil ginger with a little honey and lemon. Have mm -hmm. that. Little techniques like that. Home remedies first instead of cough syrup. This works much better. I love that. That makes so much sense. It's a and ginger story. and garlic we haven't talked about, but those are also anti inflammatories, aren't they? I That's think. Cool. And they're in everything that you guys make. And the chili peppers are the good for stuff. Yes, and, and, and it's just ginger and garlic is, is a must, is the base for all the Indian cuisine. You mm -hmm. have to, it stays for more than a week in the refrigerator. So uh, basically, it's equal quantity of um, ginger and garlic. It is the recipe is in the book. Um, so make that and keep. And the trick is to put a little bit of lemon juice and a, and a little bit of oil, not too much oil because it can cause botulism. So, oh, interesting. Yes, I've done it with canola oil was the recipe I had with it, but maybe less. <laughs> Not too much because the, because the oxygen has to escape. So just a little bit of lemon juice and, and just make the paste and keep. You can add it. Everything tastes good. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely true. So, May, how do you stay healthy in a really tasty world? Yes, I... I I want flavors and I want good food. I am a foodie. I travel all around <laughs> the world. But uh, but the thing is, you no know, cooking at home is very important. So from morning till evening, we make good food. We have mm. my garden I'm growing. We have all kinds of herbs, um, curry leaf to cilantro to bay leaf to all herbs in the summer. It's so exciting. You can um, keep cilantro alive in your garden. I'm very impressed. I have a hard time with it. In my garden, we have an edible garden. We're pr promoting as well as a business. Um, oh, cool. So everything organic, how to manage all that. We are teaching people how to do that. Um, it's amazing. The joy of life. Very simple. It doesn't have to be expensive. You can have a five-star meal in your home. Mm. Um, you know, learn how to cook properly. So I've been... See, from my family, I have learned all my parents and families, every grandmothers, they are extremely good cooks. And I have a quest for learning. I learn from all the chefs. Whenever I go to India, I go to these chefs and I want to learn every bit of it, every regional cuisines, the original way. I mm. want to learn the original way, the old ways. That's what I'm capturing and sharing. Mm -hmm. And when you think about staying healthy in a really tasty world, how do you practice that with love, kindness, and compassion towards yourself and others? Yes, yeah, you need to show compassion towards uh, towards yourself first. If you're not healthy, mm. you can't, you know, uh, happy. So if you're happy, you can be happy. Uh, everybody else <laughs> surrounding will be happy. But simple, see, like breakfast, for example, you sit down uh, with a family meal, sharing that that love. Like always, my parents showed me that. So I want to show that to my family. I have an American husband. It's different for American way, but they mm. love that, like simple, easy, uh, fabulous. Uh, take a little more care. Use a little bit of compassion. When you see, you can see the flavors added <laughs> shows a lot of compassion. May, mm. you made me flash back to really the first line of your introduction, which I read, and I sort of read it and then started to cry. Uh, you have to help me with the phrase. I think it's Atiti Devo Bhava. Can you explain yeah. that? Or and pronounce the correct pronunciation and explain it? I think uh, when I was writing the introduction, I wanted something special which showcases Indian philosophy of hospitality. Basically, Adidi Devo Bhava means, Adidi means a guest, Devo means God. So basically, you are treating everyone you come into your home as gods. That means oh. you so anybody who comes to an, an Indian home will not be <laughs> going hungry or without 
treating them properly. So we'll first greet them with these nice drinks and call nimbu pani or a lemonade in the hot summer day when they come in. Um, mm. uh, no, always, friends will be coming into the house. The neighbors will be walking into the house. Very different situation <laughs> than in this country. So, but in my neighborhood, I try to practice that. <laughs> so all my friends and neighbors come to my house, sit in the porch, have a cup, glass of tea, and uh, we always invite people. Oh, that's lovely. So, right. Yes. Yeah, so the culture of sharing with other people is part of it. It's part of the, that's what I showcase in the book. It's the philosophy of family and uh, like, you know, food is the center. That is how you connect. When the child is born, when the child is born, we have such a nice gathering. When, uh, when there is, um, when, 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 when you're pregnant, uh, we have special kind of food. There's a lady who comes in and prepares special kind of food when after the birth of the child. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's interesting. So many traditions, so many cultures, it seems, center around food and hospitality and food. Sharing yes. food is a way of sharing love. And one of the things that's interesting about your culture is that there's also, because of Ayurveda perhaps, there's also a strong connection to health through food, yes. mm-hmm. which I don't think we always have. Certainly we don't in, in the American culture currently <laughs> so that really helped me my grandfather always uh, mentioned about that um, yeah for example my son I never gave yogurt in the night uh, I believe it causes phlegm mm. uh, so um, things like that lukewarm water no cold water so and and rinsing with the with the uh, the salt solution. So instead of uh, having surgeries, the, which the doctors recommended and all that, taking the adenoids, I didn't do anything. But simple techniques, simple, I gargle with turmeric and giving him really wholesome food, everything made from scratch, very minimal. And he has nut allergies as well. So mm. I have to be careful. I have never seen anybody with nut allergy in my families. But here, I think it's because of the processed food. Mm. And and everything you get here, I didn't. I had no idea when I came here. So I bought okay snacks like orange juices to 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 cereal bars. Okay, that is healthy. Mm-hmm. Now I learn from my research. It's not that great. So I make my scones in the morning. Very simple. Ten minutes takes me whole grain scones with oats. And other thing is, I make for my child. I make an apple pancake actually, which is in my. <laughs> yeah, I saw that in the book. Okay, yeah. May. Not only are we coming for dinner, we're going to sleep over, and we're going to stay for breakfast, too. <laughs> Welcome, Rick. <laughs> hey, I have a random question. Do you have an opinion? You've talked about turmeric a lot. It's obviously a very important spice. Do you have an opinion about using fresh turmeric root as opposed to the powdered stuff that, that you buy already ground? I think uh, mainly we use the powder, but I use the turmeric root as well. You can grate it in salads. You can make pickles. You, you like you can make pickles with simple garlic and vinegar um, and ginger. So my mother makes a simple pickle with that. Um, so mainly you can use powder that is more effective. Um, okay, and that used in everything. Every single dish in India, we use turmeric. So mm-hmm. I believe Indian people don't have much of Alzheimer's or cancers are less. Uh, but the, 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 the important thing is the quality. Mm. This is the thing. Um, thing is that is why I introduced the spice line. When I looked around, most of the spices I don't know the Indian markets. I'm not comfortable whether they are sprayed or not. So I had mm. to create this tool, uh, to, uh, create this uh, spice line, which is pure with no additives, no chemicals, organic, all processed here in the U.S. So mm. I where the highest quality of spices are brought here and packaged, and it has many different spices blended together for ease of use for people it's versatile blend you put a tablespoon of that spice my carolyn curry and anything tastes good you can make soups with that you can make uh, roasts with that you can make um, salads uh, salad dressings with that so mm. I, such a way it's simple for people it has a lot of turmeric i've hid so if i give my husband a yellow curry every day he won't eat so <laughs> <laughs> They have really balanced with two types of paprikas and cinnamon and nutmeg. Wow. Everyone to use, young, old. People go really, all my kids, my child's friends come here and Mrs. Friedel's food, they love. It's not spicy. See, that's what the curry myth which people have, I think, has to be, uh, we have to get rid of that because it's, mm-hmm. it's the balance of flavors. 
um, like cinnamon and nutmeg and mace, M-A-C-E mace, which is the cover of uh, uh, the nutmeg. That is one of the mm. base flavors of the South, which I, where I come from. You know, in your country, in India and other countries, the tradition of using spices is so prevalent, and it's never really been that here in the United States. Do you have an opinion on why? You know, the, in the 18th century, the spices, uh, spice trade happened, and then um, so India was the center of the spices, and we have about 250 types of spices which go from India. Um, you know, India was the center of the spices, and my family was part of it. Uh, we were That's exciting. Both. And I have thousands of acres of spice estates, which I my family owned. But now it's uh, all separated. But but that is the way India was. Like, why did the Europeans go to India um, to for spices? And mm-hmm. it was it was a it was a commodity for trade. It was uh, um, it was uh, even even the Egyptians brought spices from India for mummifying. Uh, the tombs. Uh, so it was. It was an amazing thing. It was healing. It was. Uh, it was uh, black pepper was called black gold. So mm. traded for gold. Some of the things. So it is. It It is. It was spice. Spice is an important part, and I want to introduce that back to this world. And um, so that is my goal. And uh, that's and great. People see. I have this food literacy program. I have introduced. For young kids, uh, I have a cooking camp, and for adults, I have workshops, and uh, it's been amazingly, uh, overwhelmingly great responses I'm getting from my classes. Uh, It's sold out class for eight years I've been doing. So Mm. very simple. It's learning the right techniques and learning the cultures. For our listeners, can you, if there's one recipe, like one, if they're not really great or big, you know, used to cooking this way, what's one great recipe that you think they should start with that you recommend? There is a gingery uh, cauliflower, adaraki gobi, very simple saute of vegetable, cauliflower. Um, or you can do this avocado cucumber soup, which was fabulous. I had a uh, hometown TV, the local TV came, uh, had a uh, f- uh, show called Spice of Life. We just launched this week and we made the avocado cucumber soup with the roasted fennel. Amazingly good on that hot summer day. It was Everything throw in the Vitamix or whatever food processor you have, <laughs> the avocados and cucumbers and uh, what else did you put? I, I took some chili from my garden and coconut milk and yogurt mm. and the roasted fennel really gave you the flavors of Malabar coast. That's where the trading happened. That's where I am from. Um, mm. So it, it really enhances the spices. So if you just you do a, a avocado cucumber soup, it's not that great. But the yeah. touch that spice <laughs> the ginger and the garlic and the touch of the roasted roasted cum- uh, fennel see when you roast in a plain cast iron skillet and then you powder it and sprinkle it you will mm. see the- it's <laughs> you powder it you roast it and then you powder it and sprinkle it yeah cumin oh. also Oh, cumin! It it has no flavor if you just eat cumin plain if you look at the malabar avocado soup it's a very simple use that for the summer. You know, it's, it's healthy. And I believe avocado is great for diabetes uh, problems. Great. So, yeah. so what is the best advice about health, wellness, and nutrition that you have ever received? Yeah, I always heard from my dad, eat colorful vegetables. Mm. Uh, morning, you eat like gold colors and then a lot of fiber. No thing is, no, we add a lot of fiber. In American cuisine, I see lacking of a lot of fiber but Indian Mm. cuisine we have a lot of balanced meals with a lot of fiber for example lunch time what do we have we have freshly made yogurt different Mm. two types of at least couple of types of vegetables local seasonally grown and then we have a fresh seafood from sustainable seafood we have or a local uh, market we have the fresh meat or what else you need if you eat like that you're not going to get sick and you have all the nutrients but it's so devout, like lunch is so, we are looking forward to my mother's cooking. It smells so good. And then sit down and have a family meal. Those are the memories I have. Yeah. And what, what are the five food items that are always on your shopping list and why? Of course, I have, we have the ginger, garlic, lemon, lime, 
uh, and and fruits i am very particular about the fresh uh, fruits so those mm. the vegetables then we have i i always need maple syrup for the sweetener mm. I, good quality maple syrup i need for mm-hmm. <laughs> lot of things maple syrup and then we need good fish very particular for me so i go to whole foods or i look for i haven't found a real good fish market it's very difficult um and um yeah these are the things and 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 oils oils what you buy is important um and uh because most of the time people are confused with the type of oil you used don't use any canola oil and things like that use um organic sunflower oil which is if you can get cold press is better mm. it's Pure, purest olive oil you need to give it extra virgin don't buy cheap olive oil it's not good it's all adulterated the thing is i'm reading more and more so buy good quality good ingredients and your website is passionforspices.com and i believe that's also your how you're on facebook correct yes yes uh, passion for spices facebook and may friday you can look look me up uh, may at passion for spices you can email me anytime i'm happy to connect with uh, with uh, with anyone who wants to learn about good food and good culture and good spices and definitely know. check out her website passion for spices it has some really great mixtures of spices that i look forward to trying well may yeah. this has been absolutely wonderful we can't thank you enough for being our guest today so Thank you all for listening. So, thank as, you oh, so much, May. Okay. One more thing, ordering the book. <laughs> oh yes, that's not from your website. You can do it on my website also shopdiabetes.org, which is actually the ADA American Diabetes Association's uh, site, and okay. I thank ADA for doing such a fabulous job uh, for helping me get this book in a very special way. Excellent. That's great. All right. Well, thanks for listening. So uh, make sure you check out our website, you won't believe what I ate.com. Remember, you can send us question thoughts. You can also find all the information on May. We'll have it there. You can also send us your emails and questions. And remember, if you have any questions, you can send them from your phone in a voice memo to you won't believe what I ate at gmail.com. Yep. And you can follow us on Facebook. You won't believe what I ate on our page. We have all kinds of stuff up there. You can communicate with us that way. And make sure that you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and YouTube. And if you'd like to uh, check out May, we'll have all that information on our website. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kate and Ray.